It's November 23rd, 1990, and it's Friday night. Yesterday was Thanksgiving, and we decided that today we were going to read about who? Santa Claus. Who is this, Sean? Candy Claus. <laughs> Candy Claus, isn't it? You know what? Santa Claus is coming. He's coming pretty soon. He's bringing you presents. That's right. What do you want Santa Claus to bring you, Cheyenne? Um, lots of ponies. Presents? Ponies. Little, my little pony? Yeah. Lots of them? Okay. This book is called Santa Claus and His Elves. Ooh, look at this. There is a picture of this whole... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> houses, yeah. Ooh, look at There's a reindeer. There are several reindeer down there. Look at all these things. What are those words say? Well, I'm going to read the words in just a moment. Anyway, we have a little man, and he's, he's spying on this whole little town down here, isn't, doesn't he? It says, far, far away, miles and miles from nowhere. At the very top of the world. This is a bad guy. I don't know if it's a bad guy or not. Let's just read it and see. Where the days are dark is night all winter and the nights are light as day in summer. There's a snug little village hidden in a secret valley surrounded on all sides by snow-covered mountains. Look at all those mountains, see? Now the village is so far away from the rest of the world and so well hidden that no one but a few wandering Eskimos have ever seen it. And of course, no one really believed them. A village? At the North Pole? Ridiculous. Who would want to live there? Oh. Santa Claus! That's who! Too the cool. real? Yeah, too. Now, this guy's his helper. This, I think, is Santa Claus. And he's sitting back in his big chair, and he's petting a, a kitty. Now, the real honest-to-goodness Santa Claus lives here with long white beard, red apple cheeks, and merry twinkling eyes. And this is where he lives with his wife, and his elves and his reindeer and quite a few animals. And there are cats and dogs and foxes and bears and little mice and a big moose and porcupines and rabbits and weasels and squirrels and probably some other animals that we've never even heard of. Look at all these guys, huh? Now, the truth is the little village where Santa Claus lives is the last magic place on the earth. It's magic there. Elves used to make magic all over the world. They made magic in forests and fields and meadows. But as the cities and towns grew up in these places, there was a mood, there were more and more boys and girls, and every year Santa needed more help. So he invited more elves to come live with him. And finally, all the elves in the world lived in a little village in the secret valley in the mountains of the North Pole. All the elves in the world went to live with Santa Claus. Now, oh, look at, here's all the guys that helped bring the presents. See, it's snowing outside. Cold and snowy. The elves start each day with a big healthy breakfast of porridge, apples, and biscuits. With so many mouths to feed, everyone takes turns cooking and baking. And those who aren't cooking wash the dishes. There seems to be no end to the washing and mending each workday, and one of the elves may have ripped his coat or it needs to be sewn, or another may have spilled glue on some of his clothes, or there's always need for washing and ironing. And look at here's everybody eating around the table, and here's where they sleep at night. Look at that. Look at the beds that they sleep in. Some guys have to climb. Look at this is the ladder. This is how they climb up into bed. See, they go... A ladder? Yeah, well, it's not really a ladder, but it's like things on the side of the bed so they can climb up on the top. Would you rather have a top bunk or a bottom bunk? Top one. Would you rather be up on top like that yeah. or down here? Up there. You'd like to be up there. Look at this guy. He has a TV set up there, doesn't he? Yeah. This guy's reading the comic pages up there, isn't he? What is this guy doing? He's got to brush his teeth. That's right, he's going to brush his teeth. You see that, Cheyenne? He's put toothpaste on there, just like you and I just did. And you and Hunter and I just did. And we all brushed our teeth, didn't we? Did you brush your teeth really good? Yeah. Yes. 
Okay, well now, after a day's hard work and a little supper, everyone washes up and heads for the bunkhouse. And they read or relax for a while, and then the lights go out. Elves don't need a lot of space, and they don't care too much about privacy. Good company and a warm place to sleep are all that matter. Now, Andrew just can't get used to modern ways, and though the bunks are warm and cozy, he prefers to sleep in a simple haystack to each his own. Look, at, he's out there in the barn, it looks like, in the haystack sleeping, huh? Okay, now, oh, all the kids are in school. These are little elves going to school. Do you see that? This must be an elf school, huh? What do you think? It says, of course, elf children go to school just like boys and girls all over the world. They learn to read and write and sing, count from 1 to 20 and draw, and especially important for elves, they learn geography because they have to learn where to go around the world to bring the kids presents. These little guys have to learn about when they grow up. You see, they're going to bring you presents, Cheyenne and Hunter. That is me. Is that you? That is me, oh. oh, that's you, a little elfie in there learning about bringing presents? No, that's Cheyenne. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. That's that's me. Mm-hmm. Well, by the time they're ready to make deliveries at Christmas time, they must know every important country, every city, every town. And perhaps most important of all, every elf must learn a craft. They're taught to be master craftsmen. Carpenters, or painters, or weavers, or printers, or cobblers, and mechanics. So they learn how to make toys. Me, this one. You're missing, you're that one, okay. Now, hardy mountain elves and their faithful dogs take care of the reindeer. Now these elves love the outdoor life, especially in the fall when the mountain slopes are covered with millions of bright leaves. And when the weather gets colder, the elves can sleep in special huts like this. Look at it, it's up on a stick. What's this guy? A dog. I think it's a dog that helps take care of, the, of all the reindeer. See here, there's all the reindeer outside in the mountains. And the elves are taking care of them. Why do we need reindeer? Do you know why we need reindeer? I do that. Huh? I do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you know, Cheyenne, why we why we need reindeer? I need reindeer. To bring the presents. Just outside the village, Santa's reindeer graze in the plants that grow on the mountain slopes. Yeah. And uh, Santa's reindeer look just like other reindeer, but of course they're not. They're stronger and smarter, and each one has a tiny golden bell attached to his ear, so, so that when the reindeer fly through the sky on Christmas Eve, the jingle and twinkle of the bells help to carry them along. Oh, look at this. This is where they're making toys. They're making all kinds of toys here. Now, back in the village, autumn is the busiest time. All the elves in the workshop are hustling and bustling at full speed. The weavers are weaving, the potters are potting, the printers are printing, and the builders are building. Look at their making toys and things for boys and girls. And all that work makes quite a racket. <clears throat> Saws whirl and hammers bang and lays hum and drills chatter. Everyone must be very careful about the tools, and there's sawdust everywhere, and it takes a lot of work to make all the toys that will be needed for Christmas. Some of them are making Ninja Turtles, some of them are making Ghostbuster pizza throwers and stuff like that. Oh, did I get it wrong? Yes. Ninja Turtle pizza throwers and Ghostbuster airplanes. And Ecto 1s and 2s and 3s and 12s. Mm -hmm. 500. <laughs> 500. Okay. That's a printing press. These guys are printing books, kids' books and stuff. You like books, don't you? Yeah, you love books. Daddy loves books. You only like kids' books? Well, I like kids' books and big people's books. No, you don't have big people's books. I have lots of big people's books. Don't do that anymore. Don't do that anymore? Daddy's got so many big people books, it just lines the walls. We can't even begin to fit them all in. Daddy has so many. Okay, the printing press is busily turning out the books and the games. What was that all about, Cheyenne? <laughs> I'm in there. 
Okay, it's always easy to spot the printing elves because their fingers are smudged with black ink <laughs> and their beards. Look what they have to do with their beards so they don't get ink on them. They have to tie their beards up on top or they get their ink all over. Look at this. Oh, no. He fell in the yucky ink. Ugh. Yuck. Okay. okay, now what's this guy do? Hmm? It says, many elves have only one special job. Charlie Chisel makes wooden balls on the lathe. And a swan. Yeah, Sam Screwdriver, he fastens bra uh, skate blades to boots. He's making ice skates, see? And uh, Jonathan Gluebeard does nothing but glue things together, like he's gluing this car together. See? Mike Mechanic makes toy cars. Oh, I see. Okay, he's making cars. These guys are gluing things together. He's got his, his beard glued to that. Look at Okay, now Rose Needle loves to sew. She's fixing doll clothes for Cheyenne's dolly. And Peter Puncher puts holes in the flutes. And Susan Sprayer paints everything, even the dogs. And look at this dog sitting over there and he got painted red. Look at that. Poor doggy. Oh, no. Okay, now here's all the toys. As it gets closer to Christmas, the storeroom is filled to overflowing with finished toys. There's stuffed teddy bears and lions and hippos and giraffes and rocking horses and fire engines and doll carriages and tea sets and building blocks and rattles. Any toy a child ever wanted can be found on Santa's shelves. What's that? That's a snow sled. Yeah? Can you climb up that ladder? As a doll baby buggy. Yeah, I wonder where the Ninja Turtles are. And the Ghostbusters. Because Santa makes them. Now, of course, even hardworking elves take a vacation in the summer. And all those summers at the North Pole are very, very short. The days in the summer are very long indeed. In fact, some of the elves never go to sleep at all because the sun never sets. And you see any boys. Yep, look at this guy. He's asleep in that boat. Santa Claus likes to relax. Well, that's Santa Claus out there. I see. Santa Claus likes to relax by going fishing. He goes out in the boat in a blanket with a blanket and a good book and a thermos bottle of lemonade and a couple of sandwiches. And sometimes he even takes his, his fishing pole. Look at that. So what are these guys doing? They're singing. They're making music, aren't they? They're a whole orchestra. Some elves hike in the mountains and have wonderful picnics and they play games, they play elf tag and elf ball and they put on a play and they especially join, they love to make music. They go <laughs> See, they're making all that music. But, uh oh. In the busy days of November, summer is only a hazy memory. And these are the days when Santa Claus sends out his squads of secret elf patrol. Oh, nice guy. Yeah, well, they come to see if you're being good. Look a nice guy. Well, elves come and peek in your windows. Looks always. like Hunter. <clears throat> yeah, looks like Hunter. It says they're specially selected and trained elves, and they go all over the world, and they write things down. Everyone gets reported to Santa. They check out and see, is he being a good boy? Is she being a good girl? And Santa makes a list because to get presents you need to be good. And the elves come and watch you to see if you're good boys and girls. And before long, letters addressed to Santa Claus start arriving at the North Pole. Of course, since there are no roads to the villages, they're dropped by special pouches, airplanes. Drop the letters. So do you guys want to write a letter? Huh? Do you want to write a letter to Santa Claus? Yeah. Do you? Bye. Do you and tell him what you want? What will you say in your letter, Hunter? I want the party bun. A what? The party bun. The party yeah. wagon? Ninja Turtle party wagon. Okay, what else? And ponies. And Mom. Cheyenne wants my little ponies, okay. That's, that's not a party van. That's a party wagon. Okay, and what else do you want? The sewers, the pizza throw, and the Ghostbusters play. Okay, a pizza thrower is a Ninja Turtle pizza thrower, and then we want a Ghostbusters airplane that they fly in, huh? Okay. And a sewer's in the party. 
Well, we better put uh, in the sewer. What's the sewer? The sewer? Yeah, Brandy has. Brandy has the sewer? <laughs> Brandy has the sewer? Okay, well, that's where they go down and live, right? In the sewer, kind of like the Ghostbuster Firehouse? Okay, they need the sewer, do they? Wonderful programming, okay. It says some of the letters are short and some of the letters are long. Each one is read in every child's wishes. When your letter, when you write your letter to Santa Claus or you tell him in the store, they write it down in this big book about what she wanted. And your name will be in there. My <clears throat> ponies. You'll get some little ponies, sweet oh, baby. Cookies. And the elves prepare their own Christmas celebration as well. They make, when they make Christmas decorations, they make a few extra ones for themselves. And they cut, they cut out dolls, and they make stars to hang, and straw animals to place under the tree. <gasps> Look at this. And the elf children make cookies. Mmm. Mmm, they eat all of them. Mmm. Your mommy makes cookies, doesn't she? I ate all of those cookies. You did? I did all too. Every year a great pot full of Christmas porridge is made. And then just one almond is dropped into the pot, and whoever gets the almond in his bowl on Christmas morning will have good luck all year long. Okay. Oh, look at this. Look at the presents are being wrapped up. God, honey, I gotta be able to see it here. See, look at this. They're wrapping up all the presents to bring to Cheyenne and Hunter. Thanks. See, look at there they come. They go going down the stairs. Everybody's going yay! And up here is Santa Claus looking over. He's up in the balcony. He's looking down to see if everybody's doing a good job of wrapping the presents. Look at here's all the kids that want to have hippos. See all those guys? They're gonna wrap up all those hippos probably next. What do you think? Constant stream of toys from the well-stocked storerooms and the packing rooms. And they got a candle up there. Do you see the candle burning up there? Yep. Okay. Uh-oh. Here it is. Look at this. A few days before Christmas, the sleighs are running. It kind of is like a boat, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The sleigh bells are polished and the harnesses are made ready and the Christmas suits are taken down from the attic and cleaned so that everyone will look his best. And the airplanes, without them, Santa Claus couldn't possibly manage anymore. They're refueled and serviced and the loading of the presents begins. And overseas packages go in the first and the second planes and the presents to the southern lands and the third and the fourth takes it right down to Australia. And then there's a plane packed up to go to Malibu. A Santa Claus airplane is heading our way. Look at that. Huge airplane. Look at, here's the toys they're bringing out. I bet that toy right there, I bet that package is for Cheyenne. And I bet this one right over here is for Hunter. See that one? Those boys. Uh-huh, I think that that's a Cheyenne's present. And I think that present right there is a Hunter's present. Now Santa Claus is getting ready. They're putting gas in the airplane. Gas in. Well, it has to have gas in the airplane to fly. And look at, this dog is bringing a wrench to help him fix, uh, fix the motors and all. The airplanes are getting ready. Oh, look at this. Christmas is almost here. Uh-oh, look. It's almost Christmas time. It's almost time to bring Cheyenne presents and bring Hunter presents. Oh, my goodness. On the day before Christmas, everybody gets up very early in the morning and they have a big hot breakfast and then they get dressed in their Christmas clothes and every elf knows his job and the elves move swiftly and silently, not wasting any time. This is the day they've been waiting for all year. Dun, da, da, the helicopters are coming in. The sled is getting ready with Santa's reindeer. Look at this. The elves are helping him out here. Santa. One last check. The compass. <clears throat> the what? The letter says, one last check. The compasses and the maps and every slayer and all. You better not forget your provisions either. Some strong liniment has to be rubbed onto Santa Claus's back. I have decided to shut us down here. <clears throat> you don't want us to make a wreck. You don't want us to make a tape of Santa Claus? 
Oh, I'll bite your ear, you little boobity boo. Yeah. Look at Santa Claus is getting his back fixed here, Mrs. Santa Claus, because he's going to be riding out there in the cold, and he's got to carry all those uh, toys on his back and carry them down the uh, down the chimney. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I know. She's, sometimes she's a boogity boogity. But she's a pretty lovely little sweet boogity boogity if I ever saw one. It's always a marvelous sight to see them start out with the northern lights. There they go. Here they go. They're bringing toys to Cheyenne and Hunter. They're going up in the air. And on Christmas Eve is full of excitement and expectations because there's Cheyenne and there's Hunter looking out the window because they know that Santa Claus is coming. Almost everyone who is outside in the dim light is mistaken for either a reindeer or an elf. And all over the world, the children are excited on Christmas Eve because Santa and his elves are on the way. And sometimes there'll be a knock on the door. Yep. And they'll open the door and there it'll be. There'll be Santa Claus. Yay! Santa Claus will say, are there any good children in this house? And all the children, all the kids will say, I'm a good kid. I'm a good kid. What would you say, Hunter? I'm good. Would you say, would you say you're a good kid, Cheyenne? No, you're just going to knock on the door. Okay. Well, the le elves' journey continues, and even the smallest package is delivered to the right address, whether it happens to be on land or on sea. Look, the helicopters even bring presents to the boats. <laughs> It doesn't matter where you live, in Venice, in a house in the Alps, or even if you're out to sea, if there's a present for you, Santa and his elves will get it there. Now you fell out of bed. Get up in here, shy shy. <laughs> boogity boogity. <laughs> Christmas Eve turns to night before, crit before Santa Claus and his elves reach the lands beyond the sea. Here he comes out of the sky. It looks like he's landing in Malibu. Are all the sleeping... Is everybody sleeping safely in their houses? The Santa Claus elves enter by sliding down the chimney or coming in the windows. Look at here's all the houses. But it doesn't snow here, does it? It doesn't snow in Malibu, does it? Well, we have a fireplace, so... They leave their presents and the stockings hanging in the mantel, please, or they put them under the Christmas tree for the slumbering people to and find them when they wake one, up in the morning. Of course, there'll be no sign of the elves by then. Perhaps even the, lo the odd lump of snow brought in by their shoes will have melted. There are millions of homes to visit in every far-off corner of the world. No one knows how Santa gets to all of them, but he does. Someone asked him once how he did it, and he said, it's a lot of work. And he said, and a little magic. And he he added, and his eyes twinkled, their famous twinkle. Look at even the kangaroos get a present. Finally, with every last present has been, when every last present has been delivered, Santa and his elves return home to the North Pole, and they're exhausted from their travels, but they're happy with the job well done. A hot sauna is just the thing to warm and relax their tired muscles. So look at, they all go into the sauna. Everybody goes into the sauna and goes, oh, boy. Look at that. They all got naked, went in the sauna to get themselves back to normal, huh? And the reindeer aren't forgotten either. Their harnesses are taken off and they're groomed and covered with blankets in their warm stables. And they certainly deserve their supper of plants and a good night's rest. And then look at here, Santa Claus. And soon everyone is fast asleep, but in their dreams, Santa and his elves can hear the happy laughter of millions of children as they open their packages. Hunter and Cheyenne will open their packages in the morning and, every, and they'll go, oh boy, Santa Claus brought me presents. And on Christmas morning, everyone at the North Pole is up and on his way to church to watch a Christmas play performed by the elf children. Look at this. They all come in and they watch the play. Aww. And at the North Pole, Christmas at the North Pole would not be perfect without some small pr Christmas presents. But for the elves, the number of presents is not in the least important. What counts is the present, is that the presents are given from the heart. And so look at that. He got some shaving lotion. 
Oh, and then they're going to eat. Look at this. Then Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus and all the elves and most of the animals gather in the big hall for their own Christmas celebration. The floor is covered with straw and a big Christmas tree stands in the middle of the room and there's lots of good things to eat, including the Christmas porridge. And everyone waits to see who's lucky enough to get the good luck almond. There's a guy up on top of the piano with a guitar and they're playing the piano and the kids, a choir singing and everybody's gathered around the table and they're eating. Mmm, look at all the good food they got. And there's porridge. They want, all want some of that porridge. Then they sing Christmas carols and play games and admire one another's presents and generally have a wonderful time. And finally, it's time for someone to find the good luck almond. Santa Claus is the lucky one. He will have a wonderful year. Santa Claus found the good luck almond. Nothing much happens for several weeks, but then before you know it, it's time to start preparing for Christmas again, for next year's Christmas. And that's the way it is in Santa's little village in the secret valley in the mountains of the North Pole. So now it's time for the next Christmas. Oh, this is the man, Maru Kunas. He's the man who uh, drew the pictures and wrote the little book. He did a very good job, didn't he? I like that. It's filled with wonderful pictures. So, when are we going to get a Christmas tree? Are we going to get a Christmas tree pretty soon? Okay.